Hello my soccer universe, another eventful week in Italy, uh, and this time not only Serie A because we also had the Coppa Italia final, major storylines there, but in Serie A we had already three decisions in the relegation battle, two teams survived and one team is down, but there's one more spot, three teams are trying to avoid, which make things really, really, really interesting there for sure. Uh, we had Inter finally lifting a trophy in front of a uh, wonderfully decorated San Siro, let's put it that way. We had another non plus Milan performance, you know, some season going sideways. We had an exciting game on Monday evening between Bologna and Juve in the rain. And we also had a pretty exciting game to start it all with Fiorentina and Napoli. And we also know now that uh, the Serie A season will not finish until the 2nd of June, because that's when the Atalanta Fiorentina game will be played. And you know, even the relegation battle might go into overtime. But let's start in Rome at the Coppa Italia final. Big occasion, I have to say. Uh, it was a really um, odd, but I actually liked the pre-show. You know, they got a hundred guitarists and drum kits out and they played some rock tunes from the 70s, which is exactly my music. Maybe it's a little bit night as well or so on. I mean, there was a uh, 7 8 in the genre, but they also played Led Zeppelin and Hendrix. Exactly my style. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about it. The anthem was, of course, a horrific, uh, you know, for one of the uh, anthems I love the most. That did not work all that well. The game itself uh, promised a whole lot. I mean, and going into it, Atalanta were, of course, the huge favorites. As I said, they're one of the best uh, teams, or if not the best team in Italy at the moment. Well, Juve kind of said they don't have Scamacca, and let's score early and have them break us down. That's exactly what they did. Vlaovic scoring after uh, within four minutes, I think in the fourth minute already, uh, where uh, he's uh, a brilliant pass from Cambiaso. He breaks through and Ian is not anticipated betting well and then he just wrestles himself through and uh, makes the 1-0. Juve were actually the better in the first half and then Atalanta really had to find it out. How can we actually break this Juve side down? Well, let's be honest, they really didn't. I mean, there was a half chance by Pazalic, but there was not really much hap happening. And Gasparini actually reacted uh, very early on in the second half. I mean, he already uh, took the Ketelare off uh, and brought Ture. And then uh, in the 60th minute, Sapakosta, Ian and Pazalic came off. Uh, and Hatebur, Scalvini and Miranchu came on. Uh, and this was the time when suddenly Atalanta ratcheted up the pressure, pressure, pressure. However, they were very, very susceptible to counterattacks, and one of them really uh, then hit with Vlahovic, but it was just a marginal offside, although it would have been a really, really good goal for him, and that would have already decided the final. Yes, Ademola Lukman hit the post, but so did Miretti late on as well. Um, and then US saw it home rather comfortably. I mean, defending in two tight lines, Atalanta had no means to break them down. And so it's another final that Atalanta loses. I mean, they have reached now under Gasparini three Coppa finals and lost all three. And this is the one thing that's a little bit of downer for them. Uh, it's the best time that Atalanta are having. However, you gotta win those games as well. But the big story coming out is, of course, Allegri who went completely berserk in stoppage time. And I guess there was a CSC situation where a player was down and maybe uh, could have been visible, but there was nothing egregious there. He completely goes berserk, he loses his jacket, loses his tie. Uh, it's almost like the Hulk uh, undressing himself, going all over the referee. He's duly sent off uh, down to the tunnel. And then even when the celebration came, he was still fuming. I mean, he came on and he was going, having a go at the referees on him. He, he was even saying, uh, where is the head of all of the referees? This refereeing is, uh, don't want to say the word, but you know, uh, <laughs> it, it was uh, quite offensive. And so completely losing his SHIT. And then even the players, they realized that, okay, let's celebrate it. They wanted to lift him up, but he was so furious, he wouldn't let it. In the end, yes, he lifted the trophy and then it was all smiles again, they made, made, made up, uh, but it was not a good show and it actually led to Juve uh, and, you know, say what you want, there is a certain style that Juve wants to their managers to behave. 
It was not their style and uh, Allegri got duly sacked to be replaced by Montero. Another interesting scene to me was that I didn't feel that Antalata were so sad and so gutted after us, especially Gar Gasperi, who was casually uh, chatting with Elkan, you know, the owner of Juventus. Uh, it was like, you know, okay, this was another game, nice to see you, blah, blah, blah. That felt odd to me. And yes, Atalanta have been saying we're going for the Europa League, not necessarily for the Coppa Italia, because the Europa League is something really uh, great, but on the other side, it's also a pretty big task beating Leverkusen. But we shall see about that. So yes, a season that was actually horrific for Juve ends with a trophy. Back to, 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 to a league and let's go to the relegation battle. So I'm not going chronologically this time. Let's uh, go first through the uh, results that were relevant for re re relegation. Uh, we had Sunday 12.30, a big one between Sassuolo and Cagliari, uh, where it was clear Sassuolo need uh, the win to stay alive and Cagliari with a win would actually secure already uh, um, um, that they stay in Serie A and it was a tight game where you felt a little bit that uh, Calibre had the freer one and then in the 71st minute Prati scored in front of the numerous Cal Caliri fans and you know this is the one thing about Sassuolo that uh, yes the stadium is nice but it's not their stadium in a way it's the one for Regina and so it doesn't really feel well and then they give uh, Sassuolo give another penalty away Lapadula converts Caliere safe and Sassuolo are down I think they have been quite a while in Serie A and have been always a mid-table team so them going down that's in a way a little bit of a shock although already last season you kind of saw the house crumbling let's see whether Sassuolo will bounce back or whether this is the end of the great Sassuolo experiment uh, whether this is something like Chievo Verona uh, that remains to be seen um, I said it already last time, given the situation around the stadium and so on, and that they're not too to my fans, I'm not too sad about them seeing them go, but on the other side, the contribution they made to the Italian game is also not to be diminished. I think they, uh, you know, great coaches, great players, everything there uh, that they managed to, to do. So I, it's kind of a split thing, but I think Serie A is probably better if there's a team with a whole lot more tradition and a whole lot more fans coming up. Then the Saturday, uh, Sunday afternoon games uh, in parallel we had Monza taking off Rosinone and then we had Udine against Empoli a head-to-head -head, more, more or less where you know if Udine or Empoli would win this would give them a real shot in the, in, in the arm in terms of survival. In fact a win for Udine would actually have meant that they would survive. However, the game got under real pressure when Frosinone scored early, early through Shedira at Monza and actually were much the better team. So it was this time Frosinone who get this win that lift them out of the relegation zone. And so it was suddenly Empoli back in there and Udine just hovering. And then Empoli score. However, the goal is called back because uh, of, a, of a foul in the build-up. So uh, there, there was a first let off. But I felt Udine really, really uh, timid in a way. The occasion got, got to invest. M. Empoli more and more got to the point where we have nothing to lose. And then Udine give away a penalty. I mean, a draw was not great for either one of these two. Uh, but, you know, it is at least it postpones the decision you don't lose it right here uh, and, and, and right now so an Empoli win would have been really bad for Udinese whereas a Udine win as I said would have meant uh, safety for Udine and Empoli being with, paired with the Frosinone uh, win being in real danger and then Udine give a penalty away that Nyang uh, converts goalie was right there and then you thought this was a 90th minute they will see, see this one out and then they give away the stupidest penalty. I mean, it was the uh, short pull to end all short pulls by Fazzini, uh, right in front of the uh, Empoli going. Samacic gets the conversion penalty. It took a whole lot of time for this to get decided because the referee had already blown the whistle. But in the end, it was a penalty, a clear penalty. Samacic converts. Udine live another day. Empoli, yes, they all still have their fate in their own hand. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but this, all these results also meant that Verona could go to Salantana and with a win secure survival. And that's what they got. Suslov and Folurunch 
Kershaw score in the first half. It was very comprehensive. I mean, Nosling himself should have had at least a hat trick. Didn't co convert. Uh, they hit the Woodwork a few times. And then Maggiore late on makes it, uh, pulls a goal back, but it was rather safe for Verona, I would say, overall. And a team that was really down and out, that had to, as I have to repeat, they had to sell all their players mid-season, more or less. Uh, they survive for another season in Serie A, so an absolutely amazing job that has been done at Verona. Now, going into, into the last round before we round it out with some other uh, news, I have it here on, on the phone, the situations of how teams will now survive or go down. Frosinone will have to play Udinese, so it's a head-to-head -head, and they are safe with a tie or a win because they are sitting ahead of Udinese, so that will say, or they can also afford a loss as long as Empoli doesn't beat Roma. So Empoli is uh, take, uh, taking on the Roma, so that's also another one. Udine, win, guarantee safety or a tie with Empoli not beating Roma. So Udine is a little bit in more precarious situation, whereas uh, Empoli is only safe with a win against Roma. So it's win or bust, but Roma, honestly, don't have too much to play for. I mean, there is a Champions League spot potentially in there, maybe staying ahead of Lazio. So, but you know, uh, it's pretty clear that they will end up in the Europa League, if you were to ask me. Mm -hmm. Also note that if Empoli uh, and Udine, could, they could finish level on points, meaning Frosinone win and Empoli get a draw with Roma, then there is a decider, a relegation decider that we had last year already uh, between Spezia and between and Elas Verona. So uh, that's quite exciting, I would say. Other results. We had Fiorentina Napoli. This is uh, for the Conference League. And you know, Fiorentina have the Conference League final in the back of off of, of the head. It was uh, quite an exciting game. Rachmani gave Napoli an early lead in the eighth minute through a header. And Napoli then seemed a little bit more in control. But uh, midway through this uh, first half, Fiorentina said, you know, we actually really better gag. I get a win here. And a brilliant Piragi free kick. Uh, Levels going on Zola just two minutes later turns it around for Fiorentina. Napoli came out and really tried to push for uh, the, e the equalizer, Quarazzelli, another brilliant free kick. It was a game of brilliant free kicks. Uh, level, level, level score. And then the game went up and down. I think Fiorentina in the end had a little bit more of, of the game. There was a penalty uh, given on a foul of Bellotti, but it was not really a foul. So it was way waved off. It's 2-2, which left actually Napoli vulnerable to being overtaken by Torino, which duly happened because Milan did not show up. Uh, yes, they had one chance, but Zapata scores earlier than Illich and Ricardo Rodriguez right after half. Yes, Benazia with a penalty pulls from back, but Torino are now ahead of Napoli. Napoli only in 10th place. That's not good. But I, I remember Milan, I think in 9 I said, finished equally bad in a way. So yeah, it can happen to champions to finish so low. I already said Inter and Lazio uh, played out a 1-1 draw. Uh, Lazio actually having quite some good chances, but in the second half it was an Inter on onslaught. Dumfries laid on, heads it in for an equalizer. Didn't really matter too much. Maybe Lazio a little bit more because they need the points for um, to you know secure Europa League um, over Fiorentina and and so on. And then the big celebration with Lautaro Martinez lifting the trophy for Inter finally. So uh, they had some weeks of celebration similar to what Napoli had last year. And then we had Roma beating Genoa uh, thanks to a. Goal by Lukaku when they were already a man down and Paredes got sent off with uh, two yellow cards in typical Paredes fashion. And then the great one between Bologna and Juve, uh, where Bologna celebrating the qualifier for the Champions League. They actually was a match for third place. And Bologna came out guns blazing. Calafiori after second, already a second chance. Make mix of Nil and Castro in the 11th. Heads it in. Bologna all over Juve, who were not on, on, on the field. Then Calafiori. Defender then lobs the keeper in the 53rd minute. The game was done and dusted. However, there were a few defensive mistakes. And you know, new Juve coach Mont Montero also tried to uh, influence the game by bringing on Alcaraz, Vea and Yildiz and also then Amilik for Vlahovic and suddenly Kesa makes it 3-1. Uh, I still didn't think it's gonna happen, but Free kick, deflected, Milik 3-2, and then just a minute later, Yildiz makes it 3-3. And in case I even had a chance to win it overall, which would have been way more. 
than would have been deserved for Juventus. So in a way, you got the best and the worst of Juventus, not only within a game, but you know, within this week, you had the cup win with a great performance. You had Allegri completely lo losing his shivel. You had the horrid performance up until the 75th minute against Bologna, and then they pull it out again. So best and worst for Juventus, guess that will be the title for the video. I talked a little bit already about the last round, but uh, let's look at the thick fixtures there as well. Um, it's all about the, rele the, 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 rele the relegation uh, battle here, and they will be played lay, lay down Empoli, Roma, and Frosinone, Udine. It's really nice the way they, the the way they made it with the head to heads. Atalanta, Torino could have some implications for, for the European spots as Cagliari, Fiorentina. Uh, you know, Fiorentina maybe want to secure that one to not have to rely on the Conference League themselves. Milan end the season with Sala Sanitana. Verona already safe and they can celebrate against Inter. Same thing, uh, Lazio probably could push Roma if Roma should lose to Emp Emp Empoli and finish ahead of their city rivals. So that was it from me for this week, another exciting week in Italy. As I said, next week is the last round, but we may go into overtime. We for sure go into overtime with one. We also have the promotion playoffs, which are going on. Um, with Parma and Como or, or, or yep, yesterday Venezia beat Palermo away from home uh, so there's also quite some stuff so there will be at least two more weeks that we'll talk about football in Italy for this season in any case give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel and see more I'll talk to you soon bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.